Hi, welcome to Journeys to Mount Shasta. This is Yi Chen. Thank you for tuning in with us today. Today we're going to start a commercial today because uh, this is a place I work uh, right now. Uh, it's a Taku cast iron ware. Okay, our website is takuironwareusa.com, and then our brand name is based in Taiwan, and the location in Cupertino, California, is the only location outside of Taiwan. What makes uh, us different from the other cast iron company is that we use a high, high technology, high precision technology, lost wax casting to manufacture our products. So you can feel the smoother surface as well as because of a lost wax casting compared with the same casting, you can make it much thinner which also means lighter weight. So if you are looking for high quality cast iron, which is, you should, uh, please uh, check in with us, uh, our website or our location in Cupertino, California. Okay. So uh, that's our commercial today because I work for this company. So. I take advantage of uh, doing this for the company. So that's wonderful. Thank you. So today, again, we are going to uh, invite our co-host. I promote her today. So, you know, becoming our, my co-host. So we can make this uh, podcast episodes more diverse and more variety and more fun, you know, because I think Linda, as you know, she is on my only uh, interviewer, interviewee, but right <laughs> now she became my <laughs> co-host. Uh, anyway, uh, I'm so glad uh, to have her to be my co-host, and we can, we can be on the program to share our experience, our spiritual path, our uh, life with the Mount Shasta with you, so you can get a also get the benefit from this. From, uh, from this. So let's welcome uh, Linda, our co-host today. <laughs> welcome, Linda. Thank you. Thank you. It's an honor to be with you, Yichin. Thank you. Just an honor and a privilege. Thank you. I appreciate it. Yeah. So Yichin, uh, what is it you'd like to talk about today? What is the messages that you've been getting? Well, I think last time we talked about a little bit, uh, we mentioned about the tailors right before we ended our episode last time. That's so right. So I'm just kind of uh, briefly uh, share with our uh, audience that the reason I came to Mount Shasta for the first time back in the 2011 was because the book Tailors wrote by Aurelia Lewis Jones. And then because that year, in September 2011, they actually published the first, uh, because this book has a three volumes. So number one volume, they published the Chinese edition back in 2011 and uh, September. So my, my sister's a spiritual teacher that we mentioned last time with mm -hmm. Linda, that that's why we came to Mount Shasta. And Mao Shasta actually changed my life. <laughs> but I would joke with the people that because that year was my 40 years, uh, 40 years old, you know, 40 years. So I would tell people this is my midlife crisis. <laughs> but I didn't, I didn't mean in negative way. I actually meant a uh, very positive way because mm -hmm. my life have, has been wonder, you know, takes so many turns. but it's all going toward to uh, abundance and then positive and then man, manifestation, fish, fish, you know, about my life. And then it's getting better and better. Even my job right now is because our founder in Taiwan, they came to, they came to participate in my uh, spiritual retreat back in 2018. That's how we connect. And later on, before COVID, uh, Mao Shasa assigned me to 
uh, connect, con communicate with them, and then so I got this job to open up the uh, uh, overseas market, you know, especially U United States and then Canada for the company. So it's all tuned in with the Mount Shasta. That's why we would like to share the Mount Shasta with all of you so you can, you can come to experience this a special place, special energy, and see what you can get out of this uh, visiting Mount Shasta. So that will be our, my uh, first part I, I want to share. But uh, Linda asked me about what do I want to talk about. I did actually, we set up the schedule yesterday, and uh, Ray Sedona, Ray, Ray of Sedona was my partner, and then uh, he passed away at the end of uh, October last year, all of a sudden. Uh, none of us uh, prepare anything for this happening. But uh, yesterday, I saw his picture, and then uh, this morning, right before I woke up, I get off, get, get off the bed. There's a flash came through that I, I need to talk about him today to, to honor him and then to also reconnect with the, his soul family and friends back in Sedona and whoever is supposed to listen to this episode that he encouraged everyone and uh, invite everyone to come visit Mount Shasta. So this is what we're going to talk about that uh, it is a very magical place because when I moved to Mount Shasta, that was back in 2000. Uh, 14 at the end of uh, uh, 2014. And th there's another story uh, about that, but I'm just going to focus on uh, Ray and I. And Thank I remember, yeah. So I remember the beginning, the first week, actually, the first week of uh, 2015. And it was snow covered, but one morning, uh, I was guided to uh, head out to the uh, Medicine Lake, which is kind of like a two hours drive. So I packed my lunch because it will be a long day. So I packed my lunch and I just, uh, I just uh, started to drive into that direction. But almost uh, two third way up there, all of a sudden I feel like I have to stop and then take a break. So I did that, and then I was guided to look at the, on the other side of the road, and I actually found a cave. And this cave was not a Jardin Ice Cave, okay? Because uh, Jardin Ice Cave is actually, there's a sign for it, and people know about this place. And this cave was just on the road, on, by the side on the road. Uh, and I thought, when I saw that, when I, when I went into that cave, I thought this was Jardin Ice Cave. And then after that, I, uh, later on, I realized it was not. And it was the cave that the Maoshasta, the spirit, guided me to found it because it's a very special cave. And then when I took my group there, I would always stop by there and went inside and do a meditation. And then first time I was there, I actually got it to do a meditation. And then immediately I connect with the Pluto's cave energy because when I close my eye and then try to meditate and then the Pluto's cave energy just came through. The, the picture, the image just came through. So that's kind of interesting to me. But what I was going to talk about is that on that day, I have a flash message came through. I thought that was my thinking, but it's, it was actually not. It's a spirit sent me a message that said, it's a, now is a time to have a partner, to have some fun with you, with you, with me, okay? 
But I didn't really think about that much because Maoshasa, there's only 3,500 population. So, I mean, I, I didn't actually think too much about that. But uh, in that year, uh, there's a group from China, they want to go visit uh, Sedona. So we make that trip happen. And that was back in, that was in June, I believe that was in June. So we went there. One day we went to this uh, Crystal Magic, which is a very famous uh, crystal shop in Sedona area. So I saw that Ray came, came into the shop and went into the bathroom because he has a little uh, consultant room right outside of the Crystal Magic. So I, I lay my eyes on him, but he didn't pay attention because uh, we, don't know, we didn't know each other. So that was it. And then somehow the, group, the two girls from Taiwan and Hong Kong, they came to Mount Shasta in October. And then in the middle of uh, our Mount Shasta retreat, they talk about they want to go to Sedona. So we actually ex extended their retreat. So we drove from Mount Shasta all the way to Sedona. The night that, uh, the night before my birthday, which, is, which was October 18, I, uh, I communicate with a person on the social uh, website that I thought that was a guy that I ran into in the uh, art fair on the street uh, playing the flute because I played flutes, American Indian flute. And then it turns out it was Ray. So when he sent me the, the picture, I immediately recognized him. So we start talking. He gave me his resume in that message, talk, tell me everything about him. I was like, uh, is that really necessary, you know? But anyway, <laughs> I already lay, lay my eyes on him back in June, so of course I was happy about that. So I told him, tomorrow is my birthday, and then he said, can you please come around 5.30 to the shop? I have something for you. So this is how we met. And quickly, quickly, he was feeling like a, uh, we, 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 we connect really quick, quickly. I, I flew to uh, Sedona uh, on the Thanksgiving and Christmas, uh, same year, and then to spend time with him. And quickly, uh, 2000, I think it's 2015 or 16, early, it's also in January, so that was a net the following, the next year. So he came to visit Mount Shasta and then he told me that uh, Mount Shasta is calling, he must go. So, uh, so he moved to Mount Shasta with me. And then it turns out the six years that we've been together <laughs> was the best six years in his life and my life. And then I always admire him because we some people have a, have a clientele base in Sedona for over 30 years. He can just give up everything and move to Mount Shasta because of Mount Shasta is calling. So I know this is going to be a tough episode, but I need to do this for Ray. You need to do it for everybody to show what grief looks like and how powerful it is and how real it is. It's and, just that it's your own. <laughs> yeah. So I appreciate that Linda uh, gave me this advice because we did actually talk about this before we started. Mm -hmm. And then so that's why we decided to do this. And then, because after Ray moved to Mount Shasta, we've been going back to Taiwan, even China, to give classes of his, cla his classes. And also he did a consultation and everything. So he opened up the different venue of uh, his, uh, his work. 
So uh, after he passed, I met a couple of his friends in Sedona. They all say, this is, Ray is happier, much happier after he met me. So I know in, right now in this past few years, a lot of people uh, lose loved ones, but uh, I think they have more, a lot more, uh, uh, more important thing to do on the other side. That's why a lot of right. uh, sudden death just, uh, just happen everywhere. So to share this with everyone here listening is that we would like to honor that what we love and they're, even though they are not no longer here, but uh, their spirit is always with, with us and they're helping us from the other side. So uh, that's uh, so far I want to talk about. I think I need a little break. So <laughs> Linda, you, should, you need to take over. <laughs> well, the thing is, is that you see what you're displaying is not only your grief and the power of it and the vulnerability, but also how important Ray is still in your life. Even though he's on the other side, he's very much in everything you do, including wanting you to talk about him, you know, to share his teachings. Because just because he's on the other side, his teaching is going on through you. And that's a lot of people don't understand that. And of course, having that intimate relationship that you've had together is also very important because people are always striving for that. And you had it. It was just shorter than you planned. And that's the adjustment that you're going through because this is shocking to your psyche, you know, but he's still very much involved in your life. And I think that's part of the thing that people need to understand that a lot of people on the other, on the other side, they have a new assignment. And Ray has a new assignment and a lot of it's through you continuing his teaching, you know, and also he's doing other stuff on his own on the other side. Yes. We haven't gotten all those directions yet, but I'm sure we will. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, actually, after Ray uh, moved to the other side, I'm, I'm so busy, you know. I became so busy doing this and doing that, you know. But uh, that's good. Keep, me, keep my mind off, you know, wondering, and that's great. And I do, right. I do believe that Ray is, is with me all the time. But sometimes, mm -hmm. you know, I miss that physical connection. Right. Yeah. Right. We're not really prepared for the, the physical not being there. Yeah. You know, we're, and, and I think what you're displaying is, again, that part that we need to talk about that, you know, um, in our society. We, we just don't. We just don't assume those things. It doesn't matter what age they are or whatever. We don't really understand an emotional level what it's going to feel like to have that loss of his physical part. And even though you're getting messages all the time, you want to give him a hug or touch his back or, you know, that kind of thing. Yeah. And we all need to talk about that more. I'm really aware of that. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. So, yes, uh, Ray's message is that encourage everyone to come out and then visit Maushasa or other places that you were drawn to and then, you know, connect with the nature because uh, Mother Earth is very powerful, you know, can help us, help, help Mother Earth is, uh, herself to elevate, to, you know, uh, increase the vibration, but every single one of us has has the responsibility to chip in our part, you know, everybody, everyone, you know. So, uh, so again, because of uh, journeys to Mount Shasta is that we, sh we share our experience uh, trips to Mount Shasta with all of you and encourage you to, you know, plan to come visit uh as soon as possible or whenever you can, you know. So that's our message here today. Uh, and uh, also, 
doing this in honor of Ray. So, Ray of Maushasa, Ray of Sedona, uh, Sedona Ray, Maushasa Ray. Yeah, mm -hmm. he's a wonderful being that uh, influenced many people, many people in his life, especially uh, back in uh, Sedona area for over 30 years. So, if you're supposed to listen to this uh, episode, please mm -hmm. uh, think about this and then, you know, re remember him and then uh, connect with him. He's willing to help every one of you uh, who is willing to uh, connect with him again. Okay? Wow. I, I would like to say something about Ray. Yes. Um, when we did the sweat lodge here in my yard, a friend of mine who's an apprentice of mine who's learning the Red Road, meaning Sweat Lodge, and Native American, he met Ray once, and we, we ate together after the ceremony. And he had a dream about Ray, and he, he hasn't talked to I Ching yet, but he had a very deep dream that Ray had come to him and really um, educated him in this dream. So this is an example of how powerful Ray is and continues teaching because he only met him very shortly, very casually, and yet um, Marlo has this connection with Ray because he gave him great detailed uh, descriptions in this dream, and this is before he passed, but whenever Ray's name comes up, Sedona Ray, Mount Ray, Marlo really feels strongly about the type of teacher he was. And he only met him shortly, let alone the people who had 30 years with Ray. Yeah, very good. Thank you for sharing that. Yeah, so when you're talking about that, also remind me one of uh, our friends back in uh, down in uh, Irvine. She mm -hmm. actually, recently, I feel like I have to communicate with her. And so I did. And then... She just the uh, first uh, voice message she left me from the WeChat was that she talked about the Ray and I has been a twin flame for so many past lives, and because uh, his uh, his uh, responsibility or his duty on the earth is already complete, so he went on to the other side and then to help us. And he doesn't have to reincarnate if he chooses right. not to. And I, I think he will stay there because it's, uh, it's a different way of uh, um, helping the earth, helping the mm -hmm. humanity. And also, this is a new way of uh, team formation. Like uh, we mentioned before, Ray is on the other side. I'm here on the earth. Is a new team formation, like uh, right. uh, Linda is here, and then uh, mom is on the other side to help her, you know. So uh, we probably would know, we're, I, we haven't seen other, other people like this, but I'm sure in the future uh, it's time, then we, we will connect, you know, more right. and more this type of a fo team formation that uh, because we do have a lot of work to continue our, you know, uh, support to the Mother Earth and the humanity. Yes. But in what's going on now, we really need the big guns. Yes. And they can be far more effective in helping us. And the word you used is humanity. It's not just one aspect. It's Mother Earth. It's all the challenges that are going on now because Ray and my mom... Lily and Grace are really active in that and, you know, wanting to know uh, and be informed as to what really is going on on Earth and how they can help. And yes, you are right. You're displaying the future of the teachings of how everybody's significant, whether they're on the other side or we're here doing the physical labor. Yes. But we still miss them physically. Of course, <laughs> of course. Big time. <laughs> Big time. Yeah. Well, thank you for sharing that. I think it's really important as we're going through these changes um, politically and just with the whole world that, like we started out, is that you're willing to be that vulnerable, a Chinese guy being tremendously vulnerable about twin flames and the importance of a relationship and the teaching, because it's not talked about a lot. So I really appreciate you sharing that. 
Yeah, uh, the reason I mentioned about that was that actually I believe that I already talked to you before about Twin Flame, but mm -hmm. uh, for her to tell me it's just a confirmation that right. I was not in my, uh, you know, hallucination, you know, something like that. So I think that everything is in divine order and then sometimes it does take time but uh, we will get there. We will get there. So well, that's the power of, of what you're doing, I Ching. Yes. Very important work. And also the fact that you're coming and going from Mount Shasta and Sedona, and you're in Silicon Valley. I don't think there's any accident to the location of where this shop is because the people in Silicon Valley, um, my kids are there, and they're in their 40s, and this is what they need to hear. What we're talking about is such an important part because we are completely responsible for Mother Earth and all the changes that are going on. And like I said, there's no accident as why that light you're holding at that store that you have. Yeah, you know, actually, you mentioned about that. I, I actually, after we move here, and then about maybe a half a year or more, maybe up to a year, and I realized the reason that why we have to be in the Cupertino, in the Silicon Valley, because Maushata is very Mother Earth, very uh, grounded energy, and then heart chakra energy. And Silicon Valley is very like a high tech knowledge, everything like this. So right. we mental, need, all mental, yes, right. all mental. Yeah, that's the word. And then we need to have the balance. You know, right. you cannot just live in the all high tech or all uh, <laughs> material world uh, and ignoring the spiritual part of you. And also, on the other hand, you cannot just live in the spiritual world and not taking care of your physical body or your physical need because you still have this body, you know. <laughs> so that's why I realized after about a year after we move here, that this is the reason that uh, Ray and I have to bring, have to be the uh, conduit to, you know, uh, transmit or transfer the energy or, you know, connect the energy between the Maushasa and then uh, the uh, uh, Silicon, you know, the Bay Area, south, south, southern, uh, Northern California, or even Southern California. So yeah, I'm glad you mentioned about that. Uh, but uh, I think before we go into your session, which we will have Linda to talk about what she has been doing and what's coming up for her you know, agenda, her schedule. But before that, I, we would like to share uh, the journeys, a journey to Mount Shasta that I just met I just made, uh, you know, the summer solstice. So, <laughs> Linda, can you tell me or can you share with our audience that why that day we have lunch together in the Black Bear and then what did you do to me? <laughs> <laughs> I was wondering how you'd weave this one in. Well, I don't know. My psyche works a strange way and a lot of times like you mentioned in the uh, interview, the last podcast of how I did this body work and you kept kind of teasing me, you probably don't remember this and I don't remember any of it, but we're in the black bear and I start talking about, you know, you coming up frequently and really moving forward in real estate because if you're gonna stay in a motel, why don't you get a house? And there's a woman there that's in real estate that I know indirectly. I've seen her twice, and all of a sudden, I'm chasing her down in the black bear, um, Stephanie, and she's she's on break, and I'm waiting for her to come out of break, and I'm not usually that aggressive or driven, but I was absolutely determined to introduce you to her, and which I did, and now there's a whole journey going. And of course, if you had, and I had talked to you about the different different places up here, I, unconsciously, it was a, the psyche, I really hadn't planned it. And um, 
And then it started this journey and then you came back and we were sitting and you were telling me how you feel motivated to start looking for property and doing this. And now you have a real estate agent, this Stephanie. And that's how the psyche works sometimes. And when even when you were talking about being called to Mount Shasta, I remember a woman, she was from Australia, and she was telling me the story of how this book fell out of her, her uh, aunt's, who was a psychic in Australia, and had a picture of the mountain. And she came up here and was up here once and then decided to get her green card. And this is the second time she's up here. And she is now realizing, because she was here the second time, that she had a dream that she needed to be here, meaning in the state of California. Mm -hmm. And she worked with flower essences and autistic kids. And she had just dreamt that and really understood the directions. So whether it be about you getting property or doing it, this is the way this mountain works. It's very um, magical <laughs> and really <laughs> unexpected. <laughs> so a lot of times, we, because I was talking to her and I said, well, tell me about it. When did you realize that? And she said, I, in the second trip, she said, I just dreamt about it last night. She said, I really had no idea. And, and now she's working on her green card and she's going to do this and that. And that's like what we were talking about. It just kind of came off the cuff in the black bear. Mm -hmm. And that was very magical and very powerful. Yeah. So, and you, but you follow the directions. See, this is like Ray telling you what you needed to talk to, to <laughs> about today. You're very good, and that's rare, and that's another thing that we're teaching. When it says turn right, you do turn right. You say, I don't know why, but I'm going to that direction. <laughs> you know, believe me, I have also have a human struggling, you know. <laughs> of course, because I'm, I'm a human being, you know. Just, right. uh, uh, yeah, thank you, uh, Linda, to sh uh, for sharing this with us. But uh, I'm going to add some more from my part was that after, after the uh, lunch in Black Bear, actually I asked Linda, I said, why, why are you telling me this uh, buying house thing and this and that? And she said, oh, there's a house uh, uh, that she know that on the Carmen Street, da, 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 da. So I said, okay, so can, can you just show me, you know? Unconsciously, unconsciously, I asked her to show me that house. So we actually drove by. But the thing happened next morning. I have a plan to meet a friend in Pacifica. So I didn't plan to leave Mount Shasta until around noon time. Uh, so I was sitting at the Starbucks having my breakfast. So because I had my iPad in front of me, I was... And then I just uh, think about, oh, okay, let me look at the, uh, you know, property in this area. So I was looking at the property. I don't remember if it's the th second one or third one. I was uh, kind of uh, going over the picture of that on this app. And then again, my tears burst out again, okay? If you listen to our podcast earlier episodes about how I started the, the podcasting, the same situation. I was in, in a Starbucks and then, <laughs> yes. And I bursted the, the tears and I was like, I couldn't help, okay? So to me, that's a very strong uh, confirmation to me, okay? Although I kind of uh, humble about this with the, and of course, I, I told Linda, I, I stopped by her, her place, so we talk about this, and I actually, when I went to see her, I already finished all the driving around the, the houses that <laughs> in the area that I want to see. See, see how you follow directions? <laughs> Not everybody does that. Yeah, but I, I kind of, uh, being humble, say, let me think about it. I need to digest this, <laughs> you know. So, of course, I came back. Uh, uh, I, I believe this is uh, what the Maushasa wants me to do, and it's, go, it's going to be good for uh, people that they, they would like to come to Maushasta. And then, you know, uh, anyway, I don't want to reveal too much because everything is still up in the air, but uh, we just want to share with you that uh, Maushasa has a very a magical power or energy or mm -hmm. uh, something that uh, 
you, you, you can only realize or understand if you go visit Mount Shasta at least once. By us try to convince you to go, it, you, you don't feel it. You cannot feel it. I mean, unless the Mount Shasta, you know, sent you a strong message or energy to tell you to go or hint you to go. But anyway, so that's, uh, that's just what happened. So, you know, right now I realize that why the uh, Mount Shasta want me to use uh, journeys to Mount Shasta because they are already planning on having me going back and forth, back and forth, and then things happen, uh, you know, doing the, all those trips that I can share with uh, our, uh, our audience, you know. So I, I sl see this, these are the something that we, we will only realize or understand that afterwards. And now I'm getting that, getting that idea, the reason why. But it's good. I enjoy doing this because, to me, Mount Shasta changed my life. So, I would love to have more people to come to experience it. Yes. Yeah, I started my journey um, in 1986, coming up as often, and I did not move up here. I bought a house in '96, so it's 10 years, and I didn't move up here permanently. Gave up my business in the Bay Area until 1998. But that's the way the mountain works. At that point, I had to be in two places at once, you know, like you're having to do. And I really feel there was a reason for that because I would have these mystical experiences. And yet, often I would share that with the people of the Bay Area. I was in San Carlos um, in that area and tell the stories. And a lot of times of the, like uh, I Ching is sharing the story of how it works. Yes. And it kind of, jogs people's consciousness that you can live simultaneously in two lives and <laughs> taking the energy like he's doing to Cupertino. Very important because he's taking it from here or from Sedona and putting that vibration there or sharing his experiences. And that's part of the journey to, of Mount Shasta too. Yes. Because it's, it's odd, you know, it's, it's very odd as to how these things happen. Yeah, you know, uh, let me share with you. I, I just have uh, uh, someone came into a store say, oh, uh, uh, she was talking to another person came to a store last month uh, talking about going to Mount Shasta, and she came in and told me that uh, they already have a group they are going to go there, uh, 13 people, so and so. So she introduced me to another line group, which is a social app, uh, Chinese or Thai, you know, Asian people, they use it. Mm -hmm. And then uh, the, uh, some of them, they talk about the spiritual and then a lot of them, uh, some of them, they're like a, a acupuncturist or oriental mm -hmm. doctor. They're also, you know, uh, doing those kind of uh, spiritual learning and, in, you know, uh, learning, you know. So she introduced me to the group and then uh, I feel like I'm recently I just feel like people I connect to a people that I I don't even know and I don't even expect to meet people from different area and I think that's a the, the power of a Mount Shasta that kind of a putting people together that they supposed to be together and mm -hmm. then uh, so I share them uh, uh, the uh, my podcasting and they're I'm sure soon they're going to want to go because I think they're all in this Bay Area just like uh, Linda just mentioned she used to be back and forth from Bay Area to Mount Shaza and this and that so you know I'm also having this kind of a uh, lifestyle right now you know it's to connect more people because I realize why the Mount Shaza uh, Move me, move first, move Ray and uh, and I out of um, out of Mount Shasta few a uh, couple years ago because we need to come down and connect people, so mm -hmm. we can uh, we can uh, promote Mount Shasta more, more that way. Because if we only stay in the mountain, it's kind of difficult for us to kind of uh, 
uh, rich people. Uh, right. And also because of uh, Taku, Taku Iron Company, that mm -hmm. we have a location here. Yeah, that gives us a more opportunity to have people that connect, you know, with with me, with the you know, with the with the company. So it's all in divine order that I don't I did not see this when things <laughs> happen, but now I I realize all the reason there's a higher purpose behind it. And then I I'm grateful for it. I'm uh, I uh, I'm in gratitude with all this happen, and then, and and just uh, I miss Ray so much. Well, see that that's that's again we're back to what he wanted you to share today about him and not only his teaching, but explaining that you followed the energy going to Cupertino, doing this and working simultaneous as he's on the other side and you're connecting with the mountain on a very regular basis and taking that energy plus you're teaching people and bringing that light down to Cupertino, the Silicon Valley. There's yeah. no accident to that. Yeah, and then um, I actually, I'm glad to uh, listen to this uh, podcast. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> because yeah. Uh, I, I started enjoy doing this, you know, more and more. Because the first, well, I think right now it's pretty much almost two months. But the, the first six weeks, I, I can say I was trying to figure out, try to learn and try kind of uh, figure out my way. But now I just, uh, I come to a point that I, I enjoy doing this because I know this is part of a, a throw chakra that is going to help me to open up because... I need to start sharing my my experience with people so they can right. also get influenced by, you know, listen to my, uh, and this is a very good way to do that. Yeah, so it's great. I love it. And thank you, Mount Shasta. Thank you, Spirit. <laughs> thank you, Ray. <laughs> yeah, Ray, well, see, that's the thing is, you follow directions. And like I said earlier, that's really a different kind of a thing for people because that really separates people because you know that's part of the shaman's journey yes. is to follow directions and sometimes you don't know exactly you're driving around looking at property you're not really sure what it all means but then it all starts coming together because it's all like you said in divine order and that's the difference of the novice and the dedicated person follows that direction and again may not know what that means <laughs> yes yeah, yeah. Most of the time we ha we will understand or realize afterward, but you yes. know, at the moment, at that very moment, that mm -hmm. uh, it's our left brain and the right brain is uh, you know fighting. <laughs> right, right. Well, and it's it's for me. I tell people that I say I'm very slow at understanding it. Mm -hmm. I follow directions, but I don't know what's going on. And it's like you said, we're 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 in a hand wrestle. You yes. know, okay, why am I doing this? Where am I going? You know, all of that. But then later on, I can interpret because it's kind of like a, a puzzle that fits together later, much later on. Yeah. It takes a while. Yes, yes, yes. Okay, that was very good. Now, because Linda is doing some project uh, with uh, <laughs> other friends, uh, so we would like to uh, ask Linda to share what she is doing uh, currently, because I think it's a big project and we would like to know about it and maybe we will have some uh, audience that will be drawn to this. So why don't you share with us, Linda, what you're up to? I would love to. It's again, we're, we're talking about Mount Shasta and Machu Picchu and Peru and also um, Mount Fuji. and. We're all connected. And um, in 19, um, in 2018, rather, is the first time that a woman was asking me, I've supported people going to Peru before. First time I was invited to Peru by an old boyfriend was 1987. And it didn't work out. And through this, through all these years, I was 
enticed. I, people, you know, would say, would you pray for me when I go to, you know, Machu Picchu, when I go to Peru? And this went on. Well, a, my client slash friend, Jennifer, was in Peru, and she was managing a retreat center. And I had another woman ask me, um, you know, when you talk to Jennifer, would you find out this and this and this? And so in 2018, we did a session, which I do sessions um, through Zoom or on the phone. And we we're doing our session. And at the end, I asked her some questions. And she intuitively said to me, well, why don't you come? And that was on Friday. And I didn't tell anybody. And I made my reservations on that Sunday, which was 11-11. I made them at 11-11. Mm -hmm. And I planned my first trip to Peru. And like I said, the first time was 1987. And then 2019, I went back. I knew I had to put medicine down. This was before COVID, before everything that was going on. But I knew I had to be there. And so I went to a very sacred area and prayed and didn't know what was going on. And um, then by April, after the COVID and everything that was going on, I realized the medicine that I had put in the Temple of the Moon was really important because I felt strongly about the world condition. So, again, I had another message of going back. And, of course, the way things have been, it's been a challenge, to put it mildly. And um, so, originally, I was going to go in January of this year. And on December 22nd at 2.22 in the morning, I was told to cancel the trip, and I did. Because, I, like I said, I followed directions, and I didn't know exactly what that meant. But now um, Jennifer, the gal that was managing this retreat center, and I are doing a workshop, and she's been there six months, and um, from September 16th to the 26th, and we're going to, you know, visit sacred areas, but um, and do all kinds of shamanic uh, work, and we're connecting with Daya, who's a man that I connected with each time. He's a spiritual leader. He teaches yoga. We're going to do breath work. We're going to do all kinds of things, go to Machu Picchu, go to these sacred areas. But more importantly, we're there to pray about the world. We have a mission. The first time I went, I met a woman who was there to activate New Earth, and she's a very high teacher. And it was just her and I talking, and I said, well, you know, how did that happen? And she said she had five friends, like Yiching is talking, that were there in the sacred valley of Peru to activate the new earth. And it was just her and I at this point. And I feel strongly about going back and doing these initiations with these, and we're going to the, um, the um, different mountains and different churches and sacred areas. And if, you, if there's anything that you'd like to know, uh, we just had two enrollments per, um, th as of yesterday, and these are clients, one guy I've worked with for six years, and another guy that's from Washington, D.C., who may be going. So if you're interested, um, either call me. My number is 530-926-1427, or my website is www.lindamheld.com. And also um, my flyers on, our, on my website. But it's going to be um, not only a pivotal thing, but we're connecting these three mountains. We're connecting Mount Fuji and Mount Shasta. And when I went there the first time, I, I'm just going to tell a quick little story. When I went on my first vision quest in 1991, up in the Marble Mountains, these people appeared to me, and I was laying on the ground, and I thought they were, they were huge. And they looked like huge Indians with Indian blankets. And, I, and they talked to me, and they put crystals in my body. I didn't, I'm not telling most people this. this is the first time I've ever announced it to anybody on a podcast. Mm -hmm. But anyway, that, I guess the time's right. And yes. so it was amazing. And also I helped with this vision quest. We had 26 people, and this is my first quest. And I didn't realize I was a co-facilitator. <laughs> That's the way the Indians work. But anyway, when I went to Machu Picchu and we're in this meditation up on this ridge, and the same people appeared the same, and but it was more of a Peruvian um, blankets that they had on their, their beans. So the star people from Mount Shasta, Mount Fuji, and Machu Picchu, and the Sacred Valley are all connected. And again, like Ray is over there helping and Lily and Grace about the conditions. And this is partly what this trip is about. We went to the, um, the Temple of the Moon 
before, like I said, this pandemic. And I felt this huge, it felt like an elephant was standing on my chest. Mm -hmm. And I asked Velma, who's this big shaman teacher, and I said, am I, is this about the world or is it about my mom or what is it about? And she kind of shook her head because we were doing despacho, which is a ceremonial teaching. Mm -hmm. And I did not understand it. Now, this was December 15th, 2019. And until the world shut down, April, being in the Bay Area and up in Mount Shasta, I did not understand our role that we were saying prayers before it all happened. Mm -hmm. So I felt very strongly about going back and doing more work on that level. Plus having fun. It's really a phenomenal place for all, all the, it's like Mount Shasta. All you have to do is be on the land there and you just feel Mother Earth vibrating through you. Yes, yes. Well, so thank you, I Ching, for asking. Yes, definitely, because uh, as a light workers like us, we oftentimes we will get like a message or we will drawn to go some specific places. Like right. uh, Linda just mentioned that, you know, uh, this uh, 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 Peru, uh, Machu Picchu uh, trip uh, in September. And I will also put her contact information in the description of our uh, this, uh, po po uh, this episode. So if you're interested or you feel like you want to get to know more about this uh, project, then, you know, feel free to contact her uh, directly. So, you know, we will put out the information so you will be able to uh, uh, get in contact with Linda. And then uh, I was talking about like light workers like us. We were drawn to do some specific project to the specific places. So, you know, uh, that's very uh, special and it's also very sacred. And then, exactly. yes, so, uh, my, me myself also do this kind of thing too, uh, like uh, when I need to go to Sedona or you know uh, some other places. But um, we are we are actually uh, feeling that you know more and more light workers uh, should step up and step mm -hmm. forward to uh, help the humanity as a whole. Exactly. You know it's. Uh, uh, I think it's a time, okay? Uh, mm -hmm. We all doing our best to do it, but as a team effort, we can make a bigger impact. That's what I try to tell, try to say, yeah. Right, well, I think it's a really important time. And the name of this workshop is Moving Through It. Because again, when we're going through stuff, like you got the information from Ray today, to do this podcast, we're moving through our own emotions and our own strength to just do what we need to do. And like I Ching just said, we really need more people that are on the same page to make the change in, in humanity and with Mother Earth and getting these things going because that's the only way we have a job to do. And the good news is, is that I Ching and I are still here on this plane so we can do it here. <laughs> and we still need help from the other side, Ray and Lily and Grace. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, I think they're pu pushing us. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure they are. I mean, here we are having this podcast, which is so fun, and I'm so thankful of you and all of your presenters that are listening to this. It's so great. Thank you so much. Such yes. a blessing. Yes, yes. And I think, uh, yeah, uh, this is a very good uh, session today. And then you can tell if you listen to the previous one, I'm much smoother today, <laughs> so, which is a good sign. It only gets better, right? <laughs> right, right. Well, and that's the channeling that you feel comfortable because you, you, what you said is you're going to be using your voice more and being out there more. Yes. You're being called to do that. Yes, yes. Yeah. And I also have a Chinese edition. So if you see the episodes is uh, under season 22nd, they are all Chinese, Mandarin speaking. Uh, our English channel uh, is a season 11. But if you can listen to both, that would be wonderful, you know. But, you know, whatever you listen, I'm sure that you can feel the energy from Mount Shasta. Uh, the mm -hmm. love energy the abundance energy, the grounding energy from Mount Shasta. So 
Thank you again, Linda, to share this with us today and then uh, to share time with us today. And then we will see you, see everyone next time. Okay, thank you, Yiching. Thank you, everybody. Have a beautiful time. And a happy 4th of July. We're just coming on to that. Independence. Woo! Okay, yes. Happy 4th of July. And then we will see you next time. Thank you. Okay, okay thank you. Bye-bye. Uh -huh. Bye.